so we are continuing our discussion from science to samadhi first uh, few lectures we spent on the first sutra which said life is energy no matter which way we look at it life is energy and based on the quantum physics we discuss now the science has come to a help that particles that we see as particles ultimately if you break it down it turns into energy so it's a dance of energy particles are have a finite shape finite size finite way of acting and things like that but at energy level everything all the rules fall apart it becomes a dance where the energy turns into particle when it wants to when it doesn't it doesn't want to all these things are like totally becomes obsolete our newtonian ideas of fixed how the mass should react and and all these things changes as soon as we go into the quantum level so we discussed over several lectures that quantum physics has been a great help but then that talked about at a very minute scale and we can say well how does it matter as long as our daily life goes on how does it matter so then we talked about the einstein's theory of relativity where the einstein shattered the concepts of everyone literally he was the only one he came up with this idea and with the logical findings with proven with mathematical calculations that what we see is not what it is things that we move around they move only because we are steady they don't move if we are also moving with them and yeah. there were several ways he put down and we went into the details of the general theory of relativity special theory of relativity relativity all these things and we can go further deep into but from spiritual perspe- perspective to us what matters is the universe that we see is lot different than what it looks like so what does that teach us how much faith can we have in something that is an illusion if you walking in the evening in a garden and all of a sudden you see a snake and then you suddenly start shouting and running away and fear and death and people with a weak heart it will even end up getting a heart attack until somebody throws a light on it that it's not a snake it's a rope come out of your misery it's not worth suffering so world is where it is it's not going to change for you just because you change your concepts but when you change your concepts and you start realizing that all the concepts that i had so far were false had no value that's when the fun starts you now you're living in the world but you're not believing the world anymore you're living with the total freedom and without any kind of responsibilities but at the same time being responsible for whatever you're doing but in the end everybody ends up in the same consciousness a pool of consciousness energy where there is nothing but freedom and spirit spiritual spirituality called it state of bliss so you can have that state of bliss only if you're ready to understand this and take a bold move into a a, a sphere of unknown sphere of uncertainty for that you have to give up your notions you have to be ready to give up nobody says you give up that's what all the religions have been saying forget about this this is parmatma you have to have faith nobody is ready for that so as long as you are open all these discussions will help you to get to that state of bliss so that's why the name of the series is science to samadhi so first sutra was that life is energy and everything around us is an illusion it is just a dance of energy energy in the form of a seed gets planted in the energy in the form of an earth energy in the form of a water comes in energy in the form of a sun comes in a seedling comes out becomes a tree and tree itself is an energy so everything that we see around us is a play of energy and energy is not just simple energy that we can define or compare with electricity that goes into the light bulbs or refrigerators and or microwave ovens and manifests in a different ways it's not just that because that's dumb energy you basically it's dumb enough that we can manipulate and and play with it and create different appliances and all these things is a lot more than that it's an energy that is manipulating us from it within it is giving us the vrutis and the vasnas and it is creating all the things that up until now 
or from the ancient rocks and minerals came the amoebas and fish and the reptilians and mammals and vertebrates and all these things up until the human being now who can understand themselves and go within is a beautiful creation of this so-called energy so it's a lot more than energy energy with consciousness energy energy with awareness energy which can perceive everything because everything around us is all that energy that we call consciousness it's more than energy it's a consciousness consciousness that is aware of every single thing that is happening anywhere in the universe immediately we even talked about the particles and antiparticles how they communicate instantaneously no matter how far apart they are it doesn't matter they are communicating all the time there is a medium that is instantly aware of everything that is happening in the universe that's what spirituality has been saying it all along and now the science is picking up the trail and so science has come to our help it's better the science has come to our help rather than our dharma gurus who have been shoving it down our throat that you have to believe you have to believe that they had no proof but yet they kept on telling us but the minds have become scientific minds now it's very difficult for us to tell our children that just have faith in god it's impossible our inquiry our inquisitive mind is going to ask where is the proof what are the arguments how can you say that this and that so now the science is coming to our help so we talked about all these things that energy is a pool of energy that exists and the whole life is nothing but energy and the second sutra we started talking about last time that there are two aspects of energy manifest and unmanifest so energy can be present in two forms in a manifest form manifest meaning whatever we can perceive with our senses but a manifest cannot exist without the unmanifest because it's like a two sides of a coin one side of a coin cannot exist without the second side of the coin that's the way it is ocean cannot have just one shoreline it still has to have another shoreline on the other side so when the, there are two sides of energy that's the only way the transfer of energy exchange of energy dance of energy is possible if there was only one manifestation that means a person is born and he's never died a person who he comes to birth if he never dies what do you think will happen to the earth so then it is only one manifestation there will be one aspect of the energy energy cannot have only one aspect it has to have another aspect a person who is born has to die so birth is a reality at the same time death is equally important reality to turn manifest into unmanifest and i'm not talking about say a person being born somewhere else and totally unmanifest he may not be in the pool of manifest anywhere not in this planet not in that planet not in another universe doesn't have to be he can stay in unmanifest form totally and it's perfectly okay the same way we talk about a tree being unmanifest in the seed form becomes manifest at some point if you open the seed you don't see it because your senses don't allow you to see that but unmanifestation of the tree becomes manifestation of a tree given proper conditions so what does that tell you unmanifest and manifest are the two balances on which the pendulum of the energy keeps swinging but they both are energy both are consciousness so whatever is visible is going to become invisible someday the only mistake that we making is we are stuck on the visible in the visible form we like it so much we love it so much we want to possess it we want to hold it we want to freeze it and that's where the mistake comes in bogi and yogi that's the main difference a bogi wants to perceive this world there is nothing wrong being a bogi all right you can exist being a bogi all through your life the only problem is you will not have the vision of a yogi because yogi sees both sides bogi he continues to enjoy all the material aspects of the life and he believes this is all there is this is all that exists and when the time comes when he has to give up all these things he is very sorry and invariably throughout the life also he keeps losing something he keeps gaining something but he never realizes the cycle that's going he's going through of gaining and losing and gaining and losing and but what his faith 
in the material aspects of life is so much that at the end of life he repents that he never learned the secret of life and then he has to come back again but the yogi realizes is the yoga yoga gives you the total vision of the whole consciousness where manifest and unmanifest are equally represented so if a yogi knows that manifest can become unmanifest someday and unmanifest is already ready to become manifest at some point why would he get attached to anything whatever is manifest is bound to become unmanifest because as soon as becomes unmanifest is also bound to become manifest again so that's just the cycle of true life not the life that we know and with that vision your attachment to the material objects starts waning away so that yoga gives you the true vision of life so we talked about the sun is shining for us solar energy abundant solar energy out of which we hardly use 0.001% of what is available to us is coming out of the sun as we talked about four atoms of hydrogen converts into one atom of helium except the mass of one atom of helium and the mass of four atoms of of the hydrogen is unequal there is a little bit of difference the difference mass turns into energy and that energy is available to us it sustains us sustains the whole earth and multiple planets and all the planetary solar system is supported by just that one conversion one equation basically supports the, everything around us and again do not neglect all the other planets either because again that could be unmanifest life because at some point earth was also in our words unmanifested desolate rocks and minerals maybe water that's about it but all of a sudden the life manifested itself from that so at that point when you realize that everything around us not just the live animals or or plants or i'm talking about even rocks and minerals are potential unmanifested 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 beings that can become manifested at some point using these rocks and minerals and and chemicals which are which we call totally useless we appreciate only the things which are moving around and we consider we disregard the rocks and minerals That's true. they we are do exactly that. important without that we would not even manifest even today we eat the food which has mineral content and rocks and minerals are coming into our body not just that we came from it but we are sustained by it and we're going to go back into that soil again so do not disregard anything in the manifested form because even that can give rise to a living life that we know Correct. as a living life so at some point our sun is going to become unmanifest but when it becomes unmanifest what is going to happen to sun and our solar system is going to be recycled to form another stars new stars are continuously being formed in the nebula and the new stars are coming into existence and along with the stars comes several planet planetary systems and galaxies and all these things are created and a beautiful life goes on forever that's the best thing you can enjoy in this life if you can get a total aspect of life so the problem is there are if somebody has lack of knowledge you can teach them but people who have a firm belief in the material aspect of life they believe that this is all there is then their minds are closed they do not have open mind to accept anything else or to utilize their wisdom to understand all these things for them there is no future there is a future for somebody who says okay i am ignorant i don't know if there is god or not but if somebody has a fake belief that there is god even though he has not realized god just because his pandits or purohits or priests or or mulla or jain munis or all of them have said yes there is god he accepts that and then he repeats it for him there is no future and unfortunately almost everybody is like that i had one one patient the other day the guy does he has a very strong family history of heart disease now so far has been lucky but he's obese his cholesterol is high and and 
he says that I do whatever you know Baba Ramdev tells me. Mm-hmm. And I said, why do you do that? Oh, because he's Baba Ramdev. That's it. He doesn't ask any questions. Oh, I do this yoga and did that yoga and all that. And yet he has a big belly. I said, how does that happen? I said, you know, what kind of food are you eating? So he's eating a lot of wrong foods, obviously. I said, you never learned anything from yoga. Yoga mm-hmm. is not just the physical exercise. Mm-hmm. It's a mental and spiritual exercise also. And that's how most of the people are. They keep looking at the TV. They do whatever Baba Ramdev says and all that. And Baba Ramdev knows everything what he's doing inside. Mm-hmm. But these people don't know. So they just mechanically follow. And then I said, you are supposed to close your eyes and go within and look at all the chakras, which are this. Oh, yeah, maybe I should. But he's attached. He, he cannot. His, his high blood pressure, his salt content is very high. He's used to achar and papas and all those salty things and all that. And I said, you go up. Oh, I can't do that. Because his mind is fixed. Because he's living at the mind level. Even though doing yoga for all these years, he has never left the mind level. The journey into the unknown starts when you're coming out of your notions. He has a fixed notions. So that's the problem that we are fed right from the beginning that this is what you are supposed to believe. And Krishnamurti says that, that we teach kids what to think. We never teach them how to think. So the process of thinking is a beautiful thing. The mind is a beautiful gift given to us by the consciousness. And the mind has capacity to inquire, being inquisitive explore the new uh, avenues and explore the new pathways, something that has never been explored. If the Einstein did not have inquisitive mind, we would be still living in the Newtonian age. Now we realize that the whole thing around us, you know, in fact, there was a beautiful thing and like, I didn't want to get into that beyond that theory of relativity because at the point when he discovered the general theory of relativity and the special theory of relativity, he still was not happy. Because they, they kind of were too distant apart from each other. He wanted to tie them together. So he looked into that and finally he did find a solution which is very complicated to understand is the gravity. He said there is nothing like gravity. The gravity that we see is basically bending of the space and the time complex. So because our traditional belief according to the Newtonian physics was that the planets are rotating around the sun because the sun's gravity, the mass is so much, is attracting the planet. She says, think again. It's not like that. The problem is that the the sun has so much mass, so the energy, so much energy is built in, so it creates a dent, literally, in the space energy complex. And that dent, so that the earth has its own momentum of rotating, It takes the path of least resistance. It wants to avoid being caught into that, not consciously, but physics point of view. Mm -hmm. So it's rotating in a certain orbit. And whichever planets have different mass and different locations, they also go around. It seems to that it's it's a gravity. It's not really, there is no independent force like a gravity. It's basically adjustment of each body in the universe to the space time complex heaviness of the space-time complex. If the sun did not have that much of a mass, earth would knock it off. Mm -hmm. And and then we would have combination of sun-earth complex we will be living in. Things like that. These are just for argument's Mm -hmm. sake. I saw that on Noah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's what he said. So that ties in the theory of relativity and the the general theory of relativity and special theory of relativity. But then again, that's beyond the scope of our discussion. But I'm just saying that inquisitive mind asks questions. Why? And that mind is the mind of a child. And that's how we all should be like that. We should not accept everything just because it's been shoved down our throat, because our parents say so, because somebody else comes and tells us. You have to say, why? Just somebody can say, somebody is like this, somebody is like that. Have your own mind and independently see that whether it's true or not. If it, it gets time-tested with your own understanding of everything, then it's true. Otherwise, that's how the leaders are created. And that's how followers follow. Leaders lead, followers follow. That's how they, you define the people. So it is very important to have an innocent mind. Innocent mind meaning you're not influenced by anything. You do not believe anything. You are, have no beliefs. You have your own belief, you believe your own consciousness. 
But that's not going to happen until you meditate and you realize what you are. At some point when you go deep in and you realize that consciousness, even Rajnish, whatever says, you don't have to believe. Even Buddha and Mahavir, whatever they say, you don't have to believe. You have to have your own proof. And once you have your own proof, you don't need anybody else anyway. You become the proof, you know. So that's very important that partial knowledge is wrong. Partial knowledge is dangerous. So to acquire the total knowledge, you have to start a journey into the unknown. And meditation is the only process that I know which will actually put you face to face with consciousness where you can understand what's going on within you. you know? But the, the problem is that truth cannot be divided. Truth is only one. So when you choose one thing and ignore the other thing, you play the game of duality. 